kick right from the goal, and it's in. Good evening, everybody. This is Glenn McFerrin from Peters Township Stadium. And this is Al Lopez. Tonight we have a, uh, a non-section game. It's the Peters Township Lady Indians versus Seton LaSalle. And Al, I can't recall uh, the girls or the boys ever playing Seton LaSalle in, in, in soccer, so this will be a nice uh, different matchup for us. Yeah, for sure, Glenn. It's, it's been a long time. Uh, I, I'm not sure I recall the girls ever playing for the boys. I believe Seton used to be in our section way, way back, uh, but it's it's definitely been a long time. Uh, Seton LaSalle is a double A school. Uh, of course, Peter's a, a quad A in soccer, so you know Peter's has uh, a higher enrollment and and uh, probably a probably an advantage. In fact, I don't think Seton has a JV team. Didn't have a JV game here today. So yeah, that's interesting. Well, I was watching him warm ups and. Peters, I believe, has 40 girls on the on the roster, and Seton had 15, so that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we got started in the game. Uh, Peters has controlled a little bit of the possession. Now has the ball around midfield. Yep. Taking it across, Scott finds Brooke Offerman over to Kayla McFerrin. Nice ball in up top, and then up to Casey Breyer. Looking for a left-footed cross. And okay. there's our first corner kick of the evening, Glenn. Yeah. It, you know, the past couple games, the girls have had a lot of chances off the corners. I don't know if we've converted too many, but we've had some nice sets. And I'd like to see us cash in the first one now, right now. Looks like they're looking for uh, a short corner here, Glenn. Get two girls over the ball, CeCe Scott and Brooke. So they're going to play it in and go two, two on one on this defender. And there Interesting. It is. I haven't seen them do that too often. You think they're trying something new to see what kind of options they have for I, later down this. I do. I, in the I season. think they're they're working on implementing that, putting that in there. That's an option. Um, when when the Indians played Moon earlier this week, uh, Moon was very very strong in the air. Uh, so, you know, maybe Coach Farab is looking for a way to mix things up, which is never a bad idea anyway. Interesting. Even if you do it early in the game to set something up later in the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. It you know, keeps, keeps the defense honest. Uh, and if they're going to only defend that with one defender, then you, you've got a two-on-one the whole time. Uh, most teams will take that. Yeah, right. So we'll see if Seton LaSalle adjusts. I'm sure that we will see that again from Peters. Yeah, interesting. Thanks for that analysis. Okay, so Peters keeps it in. Breyer tries to keep it in play, but it goes out of bounds to Seton. So we have a, another, another fairly warm night. For, for late September. It's get, been getting a little bit chillier, and tonight's supposed to get in the 50s, but probably a good night for soccer, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's getting to that weather where you like to you like to play. Um, yeah. We'll get into the weather where it'll be better weather to play and then watch the game. Or you just come up to the cozy press box and then announce the game where it's nice and comfortable. You can do that. Well. Seton moving the ball around a bit here. So what do you think this does for, for a squad like Seton? You know, they play all, all two A schools, except for maybe one or two non-section games, and it's probably the only quad, quad A team they'll play. I, I would guess. I would guess. You know, I think it, um, it gives them something to look forward to during the season, and it's a measuring stick for them. Um, yeah, you know, Seton does, does pretty well in their classification. Um, you know, sort of middle of the season of section play, you get a game like this, you know, you can really look forward to it. There's there's no downside for Seton playing a game like this. Certainly nothing to lose. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's a it's a win-win for Seton for sure. 
Yeah, I would think it really helped for other games as well, just the speed of play and, and you used to seeing that. And I did see, I think they're undefeated in their section, so they're having a good year. So Seton can make some things happen. And they're, I think they're a perennial, you know, playoff contender uh, in the double-A class. So, um, you know, they they, uh, they very well may give the Indians a little bit of a test here. We'll, we'll see. We're almost five minutes in and... Uh, no great chances for anybody quite yet. It was a nice ball over top. Good thought there on the cross. The goalie came out, though, to I think stop that, that. Sarah Heisinger looking for Breyer or Marvin coming in. Good ball. Keeper bobbled it, but then she was able to, able to come up with it. Hannah wins that ball directly from the punt. She's... Uh, there's a good battle going battle on there. there. Seton is a little pushing and shoving between the two, but I thought yeah. that was all good stuff right there. All, all good, yeah. Hannah was strong on the ball, able to hold off Paige Cusis, the freshman from Seton. Just, Kayla just misses Sarah showing across there. Yeah, it seemed like... Uh, I don't mind the play there, probably a little too long, but as Coach Verib said, could have served it up in the middle too. But we do do a good job of getting the ball down into the corner, and it seems like that's where some of our better opportunities yeah, come from. I, I like the thought there to find Sarah's feet inside the box. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's always a good option if if you can do that. If you can do that on a regular basis, you know you're going to make some create some real opportunities. There's Kayla, sliding it in the middle, cleared by Seton. She finds Offerman. You can see a lot of space here for the yeah. Peters defenders to possess. And then they're going to play it back and get Emma Sawich a touch. She goes back to Perosco. Is that part of the game plan maybe a little bit too? Do you think that was uh, orchestrated? Hey, I, let's I, play a little bit back so we can – start a run and get used to that? I think, I, I'm quite sure it is. I, I would guess that Coach Vera told the girls he wants them to hold the ball, keep the ball, keep possession. And we're certainly seeing that. Here's Brooke Offerman. She's going to take a Might shot win. early. Tried to repeat last night when she scored the early first goal against Baldwin from distance, but uh, the Seton keepers able to make that stop. Now stuck, moving. Sideways, so she's going to hit a shot. Seaton keeper comes up with that one also. So she's been busy first part of the game. It's about three or four saves, probably four saves she's had to make. None of, none of them have been uh, real difficult, but, but made the saves nonetheless. Schwager back to Mia Gentile to Perosco and the – Good ball up into the midfield here. Yeah, I like that one. I know sometimes you, you, you switch sides, but, you know, you can catch them off guard, I think, when you don't have that fourth pass all the way to the other side, play the ball to the middle. Exactly, exactly. Well, there's yeah, a nice a cross. cross there. See if we can get one. Good effort. Ball still up in the air. Marvin with a nice cross to Breyer. Breyer Let's settle that. able to get on the other end. Hannah does settle it. Gets it over to Kayla. Serves that up, just out of the reach. I think that was was that Jill Marvin in that's, there, or was that Heisinger? Jill Marvin. Yeah, that's yeah. Marvin. Yeah. She uh, a difficult ball to to try to corral there, but she was almost able to do it. And so, we've got another corner. What's the uh, what's your preference there, Al? Do you try to head that in the net, or do you try to uh, you know let it come down to your foot and kick I, it in the net? I, when you I think when you're in that close, you try to head that. Um, it's a little easier to make sure you make contact. Mm -hmm. There's Looks a corner. Like from Take Kayla. that one in. That's a goal. It is. I don't know. I couldn't see who got it. I, I know Hannah was around the ball somewhere, but I can't. Usually we can tell by who they're congratulating. I couldn't tell. It was I'll a check great with. in swinger from Kayla. I'm going to have to. We're trying to, trying to figure out who put that in there. We're trying to confirm with uh, with Doug Breyer. I think he said that Casey got it. 
but I'm not certain. So we'll, we'll get clarification on who got the goal. Well, at any rate, one It was one a good zero. effort. We, you know, it was a well, ball was well played in, and, you know, someone, someone finished it. So one nothing Peters. We're about nine. We're nine minutes in. Uh, Peters Township leads Seton LaSalle one to nothing. Word is Hannah stuck with the first goal of the evening from Kayla. Two seniors hooking up. Here's Marvin. Unselfish oh, ball job. and a goal. Well done. And that's Hannah stuck again. Yeah, and Hannah gets her second of the night. Two goals within about thirty seconds there, Glenn. Now, who had that pass there? That was, was, that, that that was, was Jillian Jill? Marvin. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well played. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful pass. Very unselfish. She, you know, I'm sure she could have shot that, but uh, she played Hannah instead, and Hannah had an empty net to work with. Everyone saw the finish of that goal, but it is interesting how all those goals seem to start with. Um, you know, someone defensively down here had a nice pass to the middle, and then we got it down the field, and that's usually where it starts. I can't recall who it was, but it's a nice job by the uh, Peters back line to get that ball up there. Back to Sawich, and Peters is going to try and work it out of the back here. Find a split to Brooke Offerman. Do have a lot of space tonight, so it would be good for our girls to get used to handling the ball a little bit because they usually don't have that much time, and in space, if you will. That's that's absolutely right. So in other Peters Township news, it is homecoming weekend at Peters Township High School. So homecoming 2019. Football game tomorrow night with North Hills, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And the uh, men's Indian soccer team has a huge matchup tonight at Cannon McMillan. Huge section matchup there. Yeah, it'd be the nice to see them uh, pull off a win and get on track. They, they've been playing pretty good ball that I've seen and just lost a couple uh, close games. Yeah, they, were, they, they got the win over Baldwin earlier this week, two to one. Uh, so, you know, hopefully headed in the right direction there. Cannon Mack had been to, a top of the uh, section, but got beaten by Mount Lebanon uh, on the same night. Well, good luck to the boys tonight. So back to the girls game. It's 11 minutes in. It's Peters Township 2, Seton LaSalle, Lady Rebels, nothing. It's an interesting time of night where it's a little bit tough to see it with is. the sun going down and you know lights just coming on, and, and 20 minutes from now will be – Probably easier to see. You think it affects the girls down there at all, Al? It does me. I have a hard time seeing the ball. I, from, I, I, from I do here think it's a little tougher. I do think it's a little tougher. But I agree. Once uh, once the sun goes completely down, it'll be a little easier. Marvin tries to cross. Nice play by the Seton defender. This is Maddie Schweiger. Again, starting in the back with the injury to Rachel Raber. Some good footwork there. I think that was Brooke Offerman. Yep. Found Kayla there. McFerrin Kayla over to, touched. is that Sarah Heisinger? Played into Breyer just a little bit long. That's a good thought, though. I like that, that little play there. Yeah, what I like to see here is, you know, the Indians are a lot of short passes and a lot of quick passes. Uh, keep, keep the defenders moving. Peters, their spacing is good. Um, you know, you do, in a game like this, Glenn, you don't want the girls to rely on, you know, one, one v one superiority or, or maybe athletic superiority. I, I've noticed it, you know, early in past seasons, I've noticed, you know, we haven't maybe uh, passed the ball around quite as much, but this year it's been a little bit different story. They seem to be moving the ball more than, than I'm accustomed to. Yeah, I, I agree with you. you know, you've, got, you've got more uh, more tenure here with the girls' program at the high school, but uh, from from what I've seen, this is uh, a team, a Peters team that really works the ball around as good as I've ever seen. Got some subs on as well here. I see uh, Macy Tracks yep. and on the left. 
Uh, we'll get you the others. I, I see shortly. Chloe Trapanato up there. Is that Chloe on the right side yeah, there? Yeah, looks like she's up top. Yep, winning a throw for the Indians right there. <laughs> Throwing for Seton LaSalle. So one by Seaton, trying to clear it out, but Peter steps in front to get that. That was, I can't tell who that is right that there. Is that Brooke? Oh, yeah, it was Brooke. Okay, over to Scott. Back to McFerrin. Up to tracks. Back to McFerrin. Played to the middle. I like when we get to the ball middle right there. Yeah, now now yeah. you can, everyone can take off. Have some one touch passes. Yeah, you, you, you can tell there's uh, uh, a sense of urgency to pass the ball. Yes. As opposed to a sense of urgency to go try to score. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, there, there may be some sort of role in there that there have to be 10 completed passes during a possession. There, to, there, there to could shoot. be, or, or there could be a touch limitation put on the girls. Um, you ah, know, sometimes a touches a coach will do that to – uh, you know, incentivize the girls, encourage them to move the ball around. But whether there is or there is not, Peters is really moving the ball around well. It looks like Irene Delino uh, stepped into the game for Peters with the subs as well. She's she up top playing up top and yep, in the middle. I see her. The number nine. She got position. good action last night against um, Baldwin. I thought did a really nice job. She did. She got in there earlier than we've we've seen, and uh, she ended up with a goal and assist, I believe. That's a pretty good night's work. And here she goes down the right side, jumping on a Seton mistake. Oh, nice cross! We'll get she a corner a out cross. of that. So she did a good job there, Glenn. Mm -hmm. She. She got her head up, saw there was only one Indian potentially there for a cross, and she tried to connect with Macy Tracks rather than just kind of cross it blindly. So good, good heads up play by the freshman. Yeah, especially being a freshman, being excited to be in the games, you, you think you want to score, but when, when the pass is there and you, you, you make that pass, that's, that's a good sign. So Kayla McFerrin on the corner, a couple heads on it. There. Looked like it must have been off of us. Yeah, I think it was CeCe Scott. Went in there pretty cleanly, but just uh, a couple feet wide. There's a sub for Seton LaSalle. In the game for the Rebels, number one, Rebecca Crawford. Sounds like it was Rebecca Crawford who entered for Seton. So the ball's loose in front. Seton does get a foot on it to kick it out. I think that was CeCe battling for it. Seton gains possession. Stolen by... A nice play by Irene to steal that yeah. ball and, and get it to Hannah Stuck. Hannah so looking for the hat trick. Seton collects it and carries it. A lot of way up the field, and then Peters kicks it out. Offerman stepped in to win that one. So here we are at Peters Township High School. It's the Lady Indians of Peters versus the Lady Rebels of Seton LaSalle. We're 18 minutes into the game, and it's 2 nothing Peters Township on a pair of goals by Hannah Stuck. First assist, I think, was from uh, who was? Did we say Jill had a nice cross. Uh, Kayla had the first. Kayla assist had one on a corner. Jillian Marvin and on Jill the second. Jill Marvin had one. Yep. I don't believe Emma Sawich has had a ball to her come hands. to her yet. Yeah. yeah. Only, only from the Indians playing it back. And that's you know that's never fun when you're a goalie. You'd like to be. In the game, and well, there, there we, we go. go on cue. 
That's a shot on goal. Emma handles it very well, but not a, not a bad shot. Yeah, she's got a lot on that for turning quickly like that. And actually, that's something Peters needs to you know, look out for. Mm, there's a bit of a foul there. Yeah. Seaton player coming in late after Chloe Trapanato headed it over. Looks like Going back to that shot as a defender, that's that's sort of your role, right, is to break them down so that they can't get past you and, and then don't let them turn and get a clean shot off. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you If you do that, you've done your job. So Peters is playing it back, and it goes all the way to Sawich. Emma playing it up. I think well, Brooke Offerman, Offerman does a nice a job to it. get to that ball. So Seton kicks it out of bounds. Kayla was trying to find Macy there, but Seton stepped in front, got a piece of it, knocked it out of bounds. Peters plays it back. Playing it to Emma quite a bit. Yeah, this is not always advised to be long passes deep in your own end. No, no, but you're not going to be able to do that against a moon or an upper St. Clair. There's a good give and go. Two give and goes for Peters, working it up the right side, oh, and it trickles out of bounds. Yeah, Chloe Trapanato, the senior, playing on the right side. I'm not sure we've seen her there much this year, Glenn. She's usually in the middle, is she not? Yeah, I think we've typically seen her in the middle middle of the field. Chloe's a hustler, though. She'll be at all, on all all facets of the <laughs> the field throughout her and very, tenure. And a very versatile player. Yep. Not a bad ball in behind, but... Uh, Kayla right there, Perasco able to handle that. Good that ball was a to nice Hannah. play there. Well, here's Hannah. There's Hannah. That was Irene, I think, who had it at first. It then was. Hannah got it. Here comes Offerman. Seaton kicks it out of bounds. So it'll be a Peters throw around midfield. It's uh, two nothing Indians against the Seaton LaSalle Lady Rebels here at Peters Township High School. Macy tracks battling and forces the uh, forces the throw in, forces the error there. She's got a little space. Good tracks move cuts by in. Macy, Seton defender was able to nick it away, but almost did Macy's work for her there, crossing it. <laughs> yeah, right. So it'll be a throw in for for Peters. Like to see us work uh, work this into a goal here. I know we want to get our ten passes or whatever, but I also want to see us finish some some plays here as well. So I learned somewhere, Al, that 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 broadcasting they are supposed to announce the score and and the time every couple of minutes. So I'm going to make right. it a point tonight to make sure for our viewers that they know what's going on. I'm sure we don't do that enough. And, uh Sometimes I get mad mad at Mike Lang when he doesn't <laughs> announce it on the radio for How a can long he get time. Mad at Mike Lang. <laughs> oh, I could, I could do it, Glenn. Now, uh, Kayla takes a crack. Oh, well, she, she nice keeps it out of the goal the there. Keeps it out of the goal. Maybe maybe not uh, in textbook fashion, but gets the job done. Good win by CC Scott. All right, so Hannah, Hannah has it Hannah. here. He's nice played by the Seton player getting that was a back. Nice play. Yep. That just that shows the importance of communication there, Glenn. I don't think anybody So someone on our team has to yell man on, right? So I, you know someone's that's, coming. That's definitely what you want as the player. Uh, that little bit of communication can can really help. Schwager a looking to come go. forward. Working with Trapanato over there. Okay, we got a few more Indians coming into the game. Let's see if we can see who that is. That's Marvin coming back, and I think Heisinger coming back in. 
Okay. And Delino and Trapanato taking a break, I believe. All right, so it'll be a Peters throw at about the 20. Peters trying to work it in, but Seaton stops that, and the ball goes out of bounds. So we have Peters Township 2, Seton LaSalle nothing. About 16 and a half minutes left, first half. Gentile gets it over to Offerman. Offerman to McFerrin. McFerrin is a, oh, a great ball across by Caleb. Cross in front. Jillian's digging for it. Yeah, good and work by Jillian. Win a corner kick. Right now, Glenn, the loneliest person in the stadium are the ball girls behind the Peters net. <laughs> Not much action, so hopefully they don't switch sides. And she can work, can, on, her, she can work on her, her ball skills back there. She can do some juggling. And well, I think she is. I think she is. Okay, Another there's the corner. corner. It's up. Like Someone got a head on it. But yeah, it looked like Hannah got, Not enough. got a bit of it. Gentile has it over to tracks and goes out of bounds. Another good serve by Kayla McFerrin. I'm going to be a little critical here in the sense that we got a head on it and then we had another opportunity. I, it's going to be important that those good opportunities, you can't waste them. Right? That's, that's it's right. Not that's right. They're going to be you, in a big game, much harder can't to come by. Those. Absolutely. We, we should have gotten a little bit more of an opportunity. Whether you score or not, we should have had a better opportunity there. That's right. That's right. And that, that's what makes these games so hard to, you know, play with, with that sense of urgency that you're going to need to play in, in a, you know, a game with a different tone and a, a tighter game. Uh, it's, it's tough to do. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take those tonight. I mean, the key tonight is get, get a win. Get get a lot of people some some reps and everyone to stay healthy. No question, no question. Call it foul on Peters here. Seaton will get the restart. So that free kick is won by Peters. Yeah, I think CC. it was CC got it, was, it out of the it air. It was CC. Schweiger gets it out, up to the middle. Hannah has it. Hannah carries, plays nice a long ball, ball and it does Sarah. get through. Heisinger has it. Oh, she looks for Marvin. And pass. It's still not out of play, but it's going to roll out. No, good hustle by Jillian. I think she got a throw out of it. You're, you're not the first to make that mistake when Jillian is chasing a ball down. She's able to able to get to a lot of balls you might not expect her to. Yeah. She's not, not only is she fast, but her, her, her compete level is really good. No question about it. Another throw in deep in that end. Now, some teams have like a throw in specialist, you know, that they, they, they can use anywhere inside like the 20 yard line. And I, I don't know that we have a throw in specialist. I think we have someone that can get it in, but not. Not turn that yeah, into a corner. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have anybody that can turn it into a direct scoring chance. Uh, of course, Peters last year had Regan Lavinia, with who had an exceptional throw, uh, and you know that was a just another threat, another facet to the Indians' attack. So Seton will play it out on a free kick. Peters will get ahead on it send it back in, but Seton collects it. Now Peters gets it back, and I think that was Scott with it, up to Hannah, I believe. And Seton comes back and gains control, carrying it up the right side. A little fancy footwork there. Well, that was a good little battle. I think we got... Uh, Brooke did a nice Brooke job. Brooke got the foul there. Yep, of, of getting in front of her. 
What's that move called, Al, where you sort of you know, cross over? So Is that a scissors it or looked something? Like, yeah, it looked like, so. a, looked like a scissors move. Uh, and she did a good job of accelerating after she did it. So um, that was a good, good looking move there. It is good looking. Defended well by Brooke. There you see Peters switches the field here, takes it around the back. Gentile has it. Up to Scott. Schreier to Scott, yeah. That ball's played long. Seaton gets it. Now Peters gets it. Kayla has it. Up to Sarah. Oh, that's Ooh, a nice great look. ball. Yeah. Great to ball by Sarah. Over to McFerrin, over to Scott. There's a shot, a little too high. A little too high. I would like to see Kayla take a rip there, Glenn. Yeah. She's in a good position to do it. Uh, agreed. Great run by her, getting up into the attack. In the game for the Rebels, number four, Skyler Cohagen. Number 16, Michelle Defy. So we got a goal kick for Seton LaSalle. They play it up the right side. Now we'll go out of bounds so the, the Indians will get a get a throw. So Peters plays it in. McFerrin gets it over to the middle of the field. Is that is that Offerman? It's Offerman. To Marvin. Who's that making a run up there? I can't see. I it should be Schweiger. Okay. And it is Matty Schweiger. That is Schweiger right there. Ball's played out, but, but Peters collects it. Good job by Cece. Perasco with it. Over to Gentile. Gentile again across midfield. Good play Plays there up by to Marvin. Mia. There's a step by Seaton, but it goes out of bounds. So we got just over nine minutes left in the first half with Peters, uh, courtesy of two Hannah Stuck goals, leads Seaton LaSalle two to nothing. Good step by Gentile there, but Seaton gains control. There's Paige oh, Cusis nice coming move. forward with some speed. Perasco steps a good stop by Perasco, yeah. Paid, it, paid a little bit of a price for it. CeCe plays it down the right side, but just out of reach. So Seton will have a throw. I, I didn't check to see. I know Peters. This is their third game in four nights, which is, which is a lot. I assume Seton yes. probably has the same had the same schedule this week. Yeah, I would guess. I did not check to see. I think that's partially so the Indians can have their Saturday homecoming off. It's a great uh, yeah, cross, great cross there. and a good goal. Marvin to tracks. Yeah, ni nice job by those two. And a good finish. Those are you yeah. Know, th those not are not easy, easy to, to volley a ball coming across your body yeah. there, and Macy tracks makes it look easy. I believe it is her left foot too, which is her non-dominant foot. So re really nice job by Macy. So that makes the score with eight minutes left. It's the Indians three and the Indians Lady nine. Rebels nothing. Number ten, Diana Escobar. All right, see so here come the Indians up the left side. Trax plays it. Back to McFerrin. McFerrin back to Perasco. To Gentile. And Maddie's got some room to turn here. Is that Schweiger? Yep, Schweiger Over to, to Marvin. Marvin. Good ball to Hannah. Yeah, She's Hannah's in the streaking box. down the right side. Let's see what she does here. Beats her on the line. 
Indians crashing. And everybody sort of got compressed into the goal there. Not much room for Hannah to So what's she trying to do, do there, just there. sort of flip it over the goalie? Yeah, I think she, she knew she was sort of uh, not able to drop it back, so she was just trying to get it over the goalie there. And a good play by the Seton keeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's made a couple nice plays tonight. There's a good ball by Trax. Let's see if we can get a good run here. Stolen by Seton and stolen back by... Brooke Offerman, Brooke gets it back. Over to Schweiger. Cece Good job by Cece. You know, it was interesting She's because, uh, yeah, Cece's got to go to the ball there. And Seaton ended up getting it, and Cece recognized that and said, I'm going to get this back, and she did. So she good did. recovery. She did. She really is able to defend that position very well. Here's Hannah There's a long ball to stuck. Left. We got She's two got Indians on the right. They might be off sides. They need to be careful. And it's blocked shot. by Seaton. Yep. Shot deflected. Yeah, Marvin. And shot high. Marvin shoots high. So they're only going to call off sides if they they are in the play, correct? Correct. If they if they if get the get the ball. Or if they affect the play otherwise. Got it. And that's a, that's a referee's judgment call? That is a referee's judgment call. So, like, if you see one of your teammates, if you're sort of on a break and you have a teammate, even if they're wide open, if they're off sides, you're probably not going to pass to them. Just go ahead and shoot it. Exactly. Exactly. And if you shoot it and it goes directly in, they're likely not going to call it. But if the rebound goes to your teammate in an offsides position, yep. Yep. then they'll blow the whistle if they're doing it properly. So that's Soccer 101 with Al Lopez. That's all I got. Okay, so we're 540 left in the first half with Peters Township 3, Seton LaSalle nothing. We have uh, Macy Trax with a goal and Hannah Stuck with two goals. You know, with Peters having the ball this much, Glenn, uh, it, it does tend to tire the, the other team out. Seton's, yeah. You know, you get tired of chasing the ball. Yeah, their defenders are probably going to be exhausted. And I noticed, you know, we talked about earlier, Seton has 15 players. That's not a lot. It's not. It is, it is surely not. You know, and that uh, that includes their freshmen. Uh, so you know, you've got, uh, and you, you can see, um, you know, quite a difference in size from uh, some of the rebel players to the others. Yeah. Whereas at a program like Peters, you've got a got a, a full JV team, uh, and a freshman and team. To, that's right, and you're able to develop players. So the ball's way back into the Peters end. Looks like it's going to be a throw in. Got a couple subs coming in. Is that Breyer coming back that's in? It looks Breyer like Breyer coming back in for tracks. I think that's all I saw. Back in the game for the Rebels, number two, Marissa Schuchman. Back in the game for Peters Township, number 29, Casey Breyer. Ouch. That Seton player took one off. She did. <laughs> the face, I believe. She, she did. She shook it off pretty well, though. Peters with the throw in. Again, off of Seton. Uh, we got a shot here. It's like Heisinger looks for an early There's cross. Cross off of Seton, I believe. Yeah. Cleared, cleared by Seton. They're going to change up this corner kick. Looks like Offerman is going to serve this one in. We haven't seen the short corner kick again, Glenn, so yeah, uh, I may have been wrong. Yeah, I'm sort of surprised. Or maybe it's just going to be from the, the other side. Could be. Because all be. of our other corners have been on this left side, if you will. There's a looks like a good ball and a header, but just high. Right in there, look like 
Looked like Perosco to me getting on the other yeah, end of that. Yeah, it looked like it. It seems like on just about every corner we've been able to get a head on it, just haven't been able to find the net. Except uh, for the one. Yes. All right, so we're in the final 225 of the first half here at Peters Township High School. The Indians lead Seton LaSalle three to nothing. Seton gains control. Yep. Just trying to she counter carries. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worked Breyer off the ball by Breyer, but the Seton player did a nice job Battling of staying again. with it. Yes, yeah, Seton. Doing some good things there. Trying to muster up a counter. Here's the Seton throw down the side, and it's one back by Seton. Ball played deep into the Peters end. Kicked out. Nice position. Oh, well done by, by Sarah. Sarah. Oh, we almost and had a collision there. Yeah, good step by number 15 from Seton LaSalle to win that ball. So Marvin with a good left foot there. It's a great ball. Sarah has it. We got someone breaking on the right side, and she tries to cross it. Nice play okay. by the goalie. Yep. Yep. Good thought there by Sarah. Could have been a shot. Could have been a cross. Could have been a little of both. Yeah. You had Hannah coming down the right end, so she's able to get a piece of it. Or the goalie doesn't, you know, field it cleanly. We got a rebound. So let's see if we can get one before half. There's a minute left. First half, three nothing. Peters. Ball's played to the corner, probably going out of bounds, and there'll be a seat and throw. A little bit of a yeah, ball misplay girls are, with the game ball. Ball girls are getting a workout over here on this <laughs> side. <laughs> I think being a ball girl today pays a hot dog and a and a Pepsi at halftime. That's about it. I think you're right. I think you're right. I did see funnel cakes tonight. I know that's getting ready for the football game too, but maybe there's funnel cakes at the concession yeah. well, stand this if evening. There are funnel cakes. You might be on your own for the second half. <laughs> One. All right, Glenn, that's half. Three to zero, Peters Township lead over Seton LaSalle. All right, we'll catch you in the second half. Okay, everybody, we're back at uh, Peters Township High School, ready for a second half of Peters Township versus Seton LaSalle. Lady Indians lead uh, Seton three to nothing. Looks like the Indians are back there with the lineup that started the game. Back to Emma Sawich, and she plays plays yeah. it out. I know the other night Emma Burroughs got to start in the second half. Oh, I'm sorry, half. you're right, Glenn. And I can't that tell. Is, is that, that is Emma Burroughs. Burroughs. That is Emma Burroughs, I believe. <laughs> okay, so Seton gets the ball. They seem to have a little hop in their steps it's in the second good half. Good battle, baby. feeling pretty good about how that first half ended. Yeah, Paige Kusa's battling CC there. Kusa's showing some very good speed. All right, here comes Peters. Is that Hannah? That is. Cross to Marvin. Schweiger is making a run. There's Jill. Nice little move. Uh, good, good thought there. Yeah, trying good thought. To find trying to Heisinger. find uh, Sarah's feet. Peters seems to have a little bit more hop here too. I'm, I'm wondering if at halftime there was a little bit of a discussion of, hey, let's. Let's pick up the pace a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, I think there 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 could have been. They uh, they do seem to be playing with a little urgency here. Another throw for for Peters. So the first half it was uh, dominated by Peters, but the scoreboard wouldn't indicate that much because it was three nothing. <laughs> Marvin a little, little frustrated with the smaller defender there who uh, was She's taking some liberties with her. She is right on her back. Jill does a good job you know, trying to earn the uh, cross there, but ultimately Seton ends up with the ball. I think Jillian's a little bit amused at the uh, defender trying to <laughs> yeah. 
take the body to her there. I think she had a word for her actually walking by. <laughs> you know, she is a competitive girl. It might be the tackle might be a little bit harder next time Jillian gets a chance. Yep. Offerman wins that. Uh, I'm okay ball. with that. Absolutely. Right? That's it, you know that's, that's the that's name why of the you game. Play the game is to compete. That's what makes Jillian such a good player. She's very talented, but also a very uh, aggressive player. Oh, for sure, for sure. She she looks at these as a you know a one v one battle with whoever is marking her, uh, and that's what makes her so hard to deal with because she does not like to lose those battles. Yep. Okay, so there's a couple battles going on across the field, and turns out to be a foul. Couldn't see who that was on. Was that on? Uh, I think it might have Brooke? been on CC. Uh, uh, CC. CC Scott there, okay. and uh, you know, just as the Indians have sort of come out with a little more energy, it looks like Seton as well has come out with a, maybe a little bit of a heightened battle level. Yeah, but you know, the first half, it, you know, there weren't any issues, but it just seemed like both teams were a little, maybe a little sluggish. So m maybe both of them had a nice friendly discussion at halftime, as that not being acceptable. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Throw in goes to Offerman, who does a nice job of fending off the Seton defender. She goes and tracks the ball down on the other side of the field here. Up to Marvin. Marvin's being hounded by a couple of Rebels. She's dealing with three and <laughs> yeah. still gets a cross off. Seton well, can't get it out of there, however. We really should be creating some good op scoring opportunities. We've held the ball down there, but we, we need to turn this into opportunity. There's a shot by Hannah, I believe. Pretty far out that time. Yeah, but you make a good point, Glenn. For all of the territorial possession you know, that the Indians have had, the, they really haven't had a ton of really good scoring chances that haven't ended up in the back of the net. Yeah. And you'd like to see them create a little more of those. So Schweiger with the throw in. And there's a foul. Oh, he did call a foul on that. Okay. Let's see what we have here. So Mia, Gentile's going to take Gentile's the free kick. Gentile's going to serve this. A lot of Indians on the back post and a lot of room there for Mia to loft the ball in. Let's see if she can put it in there. I couldn't, didn't quite get it off the ground. That's Schweiger over to plays it over to Kayla. Kayla with shot the shot. On goal scooped up by the keeper. Not an easy one to deal with, especially with two Indians coming in your face. And she runs it out of there. Seaton collects it. Perosco comes up. Alexis Perosco has really had a um, a nice season. She's really yeah, done a nice she job back she, there. She has. She's. She, her transition game is really good. I'm a big fan of that. She always seems to want to get it quickly from the defensive end up to offense. We can get get some get on the attack. Brooke Offerman in her defensive center midfield position is really seeing a lot of the ball tonight, a able to distribute and uh, you know sort of bring the ball from the back to the front here. She's having herself a nice game. There she is. She looks for Casey Breyer. Yeah. Nice overlapping run and a great touch by Casey to Kayla. Kayla wins, wins the ball again, but the seat keeper jumps on it. Yeah, a little bit more urgency the past few minutes. So we're at Peters Township High School with the score of Peters Township 3, Seton LaSalle nothing, with 33 minutes left to go in the second half. All three Peters goals were scored in the first half. Let's see if Peters can work a uh, nice offensive set here. There's a cross trying to find Stuck, but Seton stepped in front of it nicely. CC Scott goes after it. And good play by CC, knocking that free. Stuck. Collects it back to Scott. 
Scott up to Marvin. Marvin carries it in across. It's going to go all the way across and out of bounds. So at one point now, do you um, – it's a 3 nothing lead. The game's probably not in jeopardy. Agreed. Right. At Agreed. At what point do we start to see – you know, they dressed a lot of people tonight on the Peters side. When sure. do you start to see them, do you think? I think part of it's score dependent. Uh, I'm sure with Pat, uh, you know, bringing out his original starting lineup here except for the goalkeeper, um, I'm sure he'd like to see a little production from them in the second half also. And here's Stuck looking for the hat trick. Well, that was a, a nice save. save. Really nice save. Yeah, nice good. job by great Jill great to by keep that alive. It's over to Breyer. Breyer back to McFerrin. Cross, trying to find Stuck. Stepped in by Seaton, but Peters gets it back. There's a shot blocked again. And out of bounds. So, yeah, really nice strike by Hannah there. Left foot, great save by the keeper, and then Marvin did a really nice job of keeping the, keeping the pressure on. Yeah, she did. She did. Hannah hit that shot, looked like just inside the post. Uh, Seton LaSalle keeper got a great jump on it, good read off the foot. Here's a nice cross to old oh, Jillian. Marvin to, got a head on it. to get a head on it, but when you're, when you're backing up to head that ball on yeah. goal, it's really one of the tougher things you've got to do. So I always wonder that, is it is it easier to head a ball that's coming in fairly hard and more of a line drive, or do you like those looping ones that are a little bit softer? What's I think what? if you're heading, trying to head it onto goal, then uh, I, I like the line drive better. Um, you know, e easier to get more power on it, number one, but it's also, you know, it's easier to judge. Uh, gotcha. And usually, mm -hmm. usually you're going to be battling. That you, you'll be jostled at a minimum in the box there. And I guess if it's coming in harder, it's naturally going to you're going to have more velocity coming off your head. Too. That's right. That's right. I can't explain the physics behind it, Glenn, but I know it has something to do with it. That'll be for another night. All right, so Seton gets it, plays it up field. Gentile collects it. Actually, it ends up rolling to Burroughs. Low pressure by Seton. Burroughs shows good poise there, plays the ball out. That ball might stay in for a while. Is that Offerman giving chase? I think that's stuck. Oh, stuck. Oh, that was a good job. She did. There's some pushing and shoving going on there. And that's a good win. Trax gets off a cross. You know, Seaton LaSalle does a nice job of winning those crosses. Yeah. Man, they've really yeah, they gotten have. ahead on most of them here. That's why they're in first place in their section. They've won a lot of games this year. There's a lot of bumping going on now. Yeah, good physical play by the yeah. Rebels there. Yeah. Here's Offerman. You know, it's probably the best thing for us. Oh, there's a cross. And, oh, another oh, great another save. another good save. I Hannah, can't believe that didn't go. And again denied on the bid for the hat trick. Good cross by Offerman. I still have never been to a soccer game, Al, where when a hat trick occurs that anyone really threw their hat onto the field like you, like you see I, in I hockey. I think that's true. I don't think I've ever seen it either. Might be a distance factor. Yeah. May not be able to get the right. hat that far. Or maybe soccer fans just are maybe too they attached like their to hats, hats so much. Yeah. I now, what about in like the professional leagues or the European the European leagues? Do they they do anything no, for No, I've I've never seen it. I, I I assume that it is an American thing or or maybe it's a hockey thing that uh, has turned into an American thing. We'll, fi we'll find out there. if Hannah gets her third goal here. We'll see what the crowd does. Scott looking to play a ball. All three Indians up top sort of running away, looking for a through ball there, so she didn't have many options. I think that's Delino. That was a nice ball there. 
Seaton wins it back. Oh, Indians to... just not able to to connect on a couple passes yeah. at once there. The, can't get that final pass to get the good scoring chance. Uh, so Seaton steps in front, but Perosco, I think, gets it back. Back and forth. Now it's back to Peters. Is that Hannah? That's, That's a nice a good ball. ball. I think we're on side. She has Macy on tracks. Macy tracks. One more touch. Oh, and another, another great save. save by the you know, keeper. I like Macy's move there, going short side too. But that keeper was all over it. Yep. Yep. I'd start shooting to her left. Yeah. That's three very, very good saves. She's uh, getting comfortable. She's gotten down quickly to her right. Great, great ball through to Macy tracks, uh, and she had a great first touch. Came in at a great angle, Glenn. Yeah, agree, because she should, could have shot it right away, but did one more touch, well, maybe two more touches. Let's see if the Indians can finish a corner kick here. Looks well, like Hannah Seaton got close to getting on yeah. top of that. Ball bouncing around. Still around. There. we got to get loose. one here. Oh, it's blocked oh. a couple of times. Still <laughs> loose. I thought the goalie had it at one point, but it came out. And now it's free. Macy tracks, I believe that is. Macy with the left uh. foot pulled in. <laughs> so we wanted to try her left side, and that didn't work either. Hey, Seaton really scrappy in the box there. Yep. Throwing bodies in front of it, not, uh, not letting that one get through. So we have 26 minutes left at Indian Stadium with uh, Peters Township leading Seton LaSalle three to nothing. Hannah Stuck controls. Over to Offerman, up to, looks like Macy tracks. Seton gets a piece of it. Sends it upfield, it's starting to roll out of bounds but doesn't. McFerrin to Perosco, back to Burroughs. Burroughs up to Schweiger. Schweiger to Scott. Scott back to Gentile. Gentile carries. Schweiger. Schweiger, nice little move. Has Marvin. Now's when you go hard. All right, That's nice a good ball. ball to Irene. Delano across. Nice clean up by Seaton. And they kick it out of bounds. You know, again, good buildup, but we're just uh, having trouble finding Indians' feet in the box. Yeah. You know, the name of the game is, is scoring and, you know, getting opportunities and finishing them. All right, the ball's in front again. Looked like Offerman was up there. It's Kayla. There's a left foot mm. shot. Sort of went behind the goalie. Yeah, it wide. looked like it was deflected, but uh, got a goal kick coming. I, th I thought the keeper, she lunged at it. I thought she might have gotten a piece, but apparently not. Okay, so we have a couple of substitutions for Seton. Diana Escobar into the game for Seton LaSalle. So we're just looking over the Seton LaSalle roster. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with what Seton's done tonight. Um, they have about eight freshmen on their squad who are getting a lot of time tonight and really holding their own. Yeah, they sure do. Really a young squad. So Seton plays it up field. Looks like a, uh, they get a fortunate bounce. Bounces off of Peters, so now they're... They'll be throwing it in from about the Peters 23 yard line. And a good throw. They might get an opportunity. Good good header. Was that Mia that got that? It was got Mia Gentile. Right where she should be. Peters working it up the left side. Here comes Macy, I believe that is. Yeah. And sends it off a seat and player out of bounds. So it'll be a Peters throw. Peters will throw it in from about midfield. Uh, they're going to play it back. I assume that's by design, too. I believe Over to so. Gentile. 
<clears throat> Gentile up to Marvin. Now Good we should go. Marvin. Marvin's played it over to. Here comes Schwager coming on the overlap. Yep. Irene's cutting Delano in. has it. It's off of Seton. I love the overlap play. I think we should do it all the time. Oh, absolutely. If we don't, we if don't got always the... hit that person, though. Sometimes no, you'd to like it. to see the, the player get rewarded for the run. You know? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh. So Seton, again, works hard to get that ball out of there, and they, and they do. They play it up the right side, but it goes, oh, and I think it, was, it went out of bounds. It was out before Mia had to play it there. Schweiger with the throw. Up to Delano. Delano has it. Uh, good thought there. And it does get through to Hannah. Hannah with a back pass to Scott. Yep, CC. And another another nice save by the goalie. Yep. Not not a bad take by CC. Not not much on it, but low on the ground where you want it. I guess there's two schools thought right? of thought there. You go low and hard on the ground, right? Or you try to go top shelf. Yeah, no, exactly. It, you know, at the professional level, you want it low. Um, here, Be because it, uh, you, you could have a rebound or a tip or yeah, you many know, more things. It, it's you, you've got goalies with the size that they're just not going to get beat on sheer height of the shot alone. Um, you got know, it. still at this level, though, sometimes the higher shot is is uh, is going to be a goal no matter where it is. Are you saying this is not professional soccer? I am just saying there's a little bit of a distinction. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's a nice chase by Marvin. Nice job. Plays it up front. There's a couple Indians giving chase. Yeah, good, good try. Good thought by Jillian with an early ball there. Just tailed away from her a little bit uh, more than she would have wanted. Schwager a with a nice step. Maddie. Stuck has Great it, and there's a nice Hannah. ball to she finds Macy, tracks, Trace. and that will go in. There we go. There we go. A nice finish. Trax gets a second crack at it, and she goes the other way. Good Slots pass by Hannah. Corner. Yep. Peter Sanchez goal by number six, Macy Trax. I'm going to call out uh, Schwager on that as well. Did a nice job, I thought. She did. She started that, had a nice pass to Hannah, and then Hannah got the assist. So good for Macy. It's her second goal tonight. That's right. That's right. So it's now Peters Township 4, Seton LaSalle nothing with 20 minutes, just over 20 minutes left to go in, in the game. Offerman giving chase, still battling. Seaton gets it. McFerrin has it. There's a cross. Oh, Hannah looking just over looking Hannah's head. Get Jill that. gets it. Jill with the nice turnaround, left-footed shot goes wide. So now with a four-nothing lead, 20 minutes left. I think it's time um, to get some, you know, some other other girls some action here. We'll see if we see any Indians starting to warm up over there. I don't see any yet. In the game for the Rebels, number four, Kayla Cohagen. So Seton has a throw in from deep in their territory. Can't quite get it out. Peters with a throw in. <clears throat> Ball bouncing around ends up with to possession of Peters. There's a throw in. We got a foul, it looks like, on seat, and that was a little bit of a. I don't know. I don't know that I call that one. Yeah, it was a little. A little soft. Yep. Looks like Hannah's going to serve this one. Certainly within shooting range for her. And it's it's in there. It's off the goalie. Looked like we got a piece. Wow, good job by the goalie to keep that from yeah, good. going out of bounds and getting a corner. 
corner. Good ball played in by Hannah. I don't think that was a shot. I think she was crossing it in there. Uh, Marvin almost got on the other end. Really, the keeper did a nice job of concentrating and making that first save. So Peters gets control, but Seton has it and kicks it out of bounds. So here we go, another Peters throw in. With 18-20 left in the, in the game, it's 4-0 Peters over Seton LaSalle. That was a good header as a pass. And we're in. There's a free. Oh, oh another nice play by the Marvin goalie. Heisinger with a nice little pass to Marvin. You can see Jillian's frustration. That's just a great save. She got yeah. good, good wood on it. But uh, the keeper made a reaction save there. So let's see. We got a corner. Is that Offerman taking this one, it looks like? And there's a good corner. <laughs> Again, we get a header, and it goes over the net. I think that might have been CeCe Scott on the other end there. Into the game for Seton LaSalle, number six, Rosalia DePaulo. And number nine, Monif Obiri. So there, here's an opportunity for Macy, but just out of her reach. Seton gets it, sends it up. <clears throat> Can't get it out. Kayla McFerrin with a poke. Puts it back into the Seton end. Collected by, is that Hannah or Cece? Cece over, over to there. Kayla. There's a cross in front. Where is it? Oh, and it ends up in the goalie's hands. Thought we, just out of Hannah's reach. There. Yeah, just Hannah was up there. Reach. Jill was up there. Thought that ball was a little bit more towards the, you know, the football goal line, but it was in reach of the goalie who made a nice play again. Seaton carries, but Peter steals it. <clears throat> Scott. Up to Stuck. Stuck with a little chip to Marvin. Nice little header. Marvin well, still Jillian on gets it. Ahead of steam and yeah. Didn't get the benefit of the doubt there. I, I frankly didn't think that was a foul. I think the Seton defender had her weight back on her heels and she was going to fall over regardless. Jillian just helped her out a little bit there, but the referee sees it a different way. So Seton plays it out. Peters kicks it back in, and then uh, Seton kicks it out of bounds. So a throw here for, for the Indians. Schwager will take it. Up to Heisinger. Heisinger gets ahead on it, tries to collect it, but can't. Seton kicks it out. Gentile settles it to Schwager. Schwager takes a touch to Offerman to Stuck. So we got a couple breaking. There's a little pass inside to Heisinger, and oh, it goes turn. in. <laughs> of all the opportunities, and he gets a little chip <laughs> shot that goes in. The degree of difficulty on that was was pretty high. Good feed by Hannah Stuck there. Very uh, unselfish play. She certainly could have looked for her shot there. So good job by Sarah. That's that's the name of the game, right? Is to put the ball in the net. That's it. So that makes a score now. Uh, Peters Township 5, Seton LaSalle nothing. Sarah Heisinger got that last goal. Just over 15 minutes left to go in the match. So a bunch of um, substitutions for Seton. Peter's giving some pressure now, and Seton sort of mishandles it in their own end, and it's way back. Marvin collects it. Marvin still has it. Seton, nice job by the Seton defender to get a piece of that. Schweiger has it, and there's a mm. solid shot slash cross that no one could get a foot or head on. 
thought that had a chance to go in at first, and then I thought that might catch Hannah Stuck's head there, but uh, in between. So we got 14, just over 14 minutes left. It's uh, Peter's five and Seaton seat nothing. Jillian showing that speed. Jillian with another touch, which I sort of like, and then she finds, finds Offerman. Offerman on the way in, and that oh. will go in the net. Nice, she, nice shot. Brooke loops it over the keeper's head there. So Brooke Offerman with the goal, assisted by Jill Marvin. I liked what Jill did there. <clears throat> didn't, didn't hurry the cross. No, she, she pulled it back, didn't blindly cross it either. She found, uh, found Brooke's feet there. Looks like uh, we had a, we have a substitute. No, it looks like uh, some Indians are going to get some. No, they are. There is a sub. So we got Trapanado back in the game. Breyer back in the game for the Indians. With the score six nothing, Peters over Seton LaSalle. We have thirteen minutes left. It's um, yeah, a little surprised we haven't seen a few more Indians um, in the game at this point. <clears throat> so the Indians working it out of their own end. Ball goes out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be a throw in for Peters. And they were thinking about throwing it back, but didn't go forward. It's Trapanato with it. Looks like she's in the center of the park now. Yeah, and she's still battling. Back to McFerrin. Over to Perosco to Gentile. Gentile up to Schweiger. Schweiger settles it. Nice job. Plays a through ball. Heisinger and Marvin give chase. Off of Seton. And Schweiger will throw it in. Seton still batter, battling. Oh, they called a uh, call I'm goes against uh, the scrappy Natalie Bolseco for uh, for Seton LaSalle. She has been working hard in there. She has, and I it agree. looks like she may have. She it looks like a different colored cleat, almost like she has a ankle wrap. Yeah, so she might be playing a, a little some injured. Kind of a wrap or a, uh, so some McFerrin on the free kick. There. Oh, and a nice header. Oh, oh, and it I didn't go in. Did not go in. I can't either. I, I thought think that, that was wasn't. stuck off the post, off the inside of the post. There's another cross. There's a scrum in front of the net. Indians are kicking it around, and it's going to go out of bounds to seat. 10.56 left in the, in the game with the score. Peter 6, Seton LaSalle nothing. Paige Cousas takes it away there for Seton. Peters wins it back. Uh, nice there's, hustle by Hannah. Yep, there's Hannah with the hat trick. Able to, able to get by the last def defender there, beat the last defender to the ball. So that makes it 7-0 with about a little over 10 minutes left. So I see some action on the, the Peters bench. So it looks like um, we'll, we'll assess everyone who's in once everyone gets settled. Looks like Abby Newpaver 
Mackenzie Belts, Hannah Pirosh, and Nicolette Gill into the game. In the back. In the back. Might have missed some others. So Burroughs kicks it out. Peters plays it up the line. Is that Heisinger with it over there? I believe so. So Peters with a throw. It's collected by Peters, but then Seton does a good job of gaining control. They play it up the right side. Nick Nicolette got a foot on it, but it went out of bounds. Throw in by Seton. They collect it. Peters applies good pressure. And there's a steal. Scott has it. Scott plays it up. Good ball to CC. Heisinger is in there as a right shot. Hits the top of the crossbar. Marvin tries to get it. Can't. See if we can keep that ball down. New Paver had a shot at it. Wide. Tough, tough with that bouncing ball. And that goes wide. So. Brandon's in. It looks like Audrey Zierden, Riley Lopez, and might be Matty Bush. Okay, so Peters gains control. Is that Chloe giving chase? It goes deep into the seat and end. Is that Delano with it? I believe Thought so. Thought it was. I believe so. A shot. It went uh, just high, so it'll be a goal kick for, for Seaton. Glenn, at our game last night, uh, Mike Gentile and I discussed the need for a spotter for the announcers. I offered to give half of my salary up to pay the spotter. So, uh, you know, I think if you do the same, you might be able to get some help here. I would give 100% of my salary for a spotter. Wow. Very, very generous. So anyone out there listening to this game at 2 a.m., or whatever time it's on, I want you to give consideration to being our spotter. Six and a half minutes left. So it looks like they did that last night too. It seems like when we have a, a more than a six goal lead, they don't put the the next goal up on the scoreboard because I, I have seven nothing in my official. Yeah, that's that is correct. unofficial scorebook. So it's 7-0 Peters with six minutes to go against the Seton LaSalle Rebels. Good nice play, play by the belts. back line. Yeah, it was. Gill looking to get forward here. That's a good thought, too. Seton collects it, kicks it out of bounds. There's the throw in. It's out of four. And one. That was Trapinato. Lopez who won it. Then over to Trapanado. Then to New Paver. Shot by New Paver. Nice. Another save by the goalie for Seton, who's been busy tonight. New Paver wins that second ball on the punt. And looks like Matty Belts draws a foul. Peter's free kick at the 40, so 50 yards out from goal. Abby Newpaver's going to take it. Okay. See if she can lift it over the defensive line. And she, a oh, real nice ball, but a nice play by the Seton uh, defender there to get up. I think that's Gill that who ball. collects it. Nice left service. Well done. 
and it's chipped up, but but to the goalie. Was that Riley who had that that I chip there? I was. think it was. I think it was, Glenn. I look for the blue shoes, but they're yep. they're hard to see because they are. They're that, that's the it then. Here. Yep, it's good to see Riley back playing, coming back from an injury, and you know it's got to be a tough one to be out so long. So we're glad to have Riley back on the field. No, oh, she's certainly happy to be out there after two compartment syndrome surgeries over the summer. Mm. Uh, missed missed all the camp and is just now sort of getting back into shape. So good to see her out there. Yep. All right, so Seton has a free kick in the Peters end. They're going to set up. They don't have that many up high, though. Seton doesn't. It's played deep. It may go long, but they end up getting a uh, throw yeah, out of this. They force Hannah Pirosh to clear it out of there. Um, and a good decision by Hannah. Paige Kousis was tracking in behind there. So throw in deep here for Seton. And they got a head on it, but but out of bounds, so it'll be a goal kick for yeah. for Peter. So Some with 320 left, it's Peter 7, Seton LaSalle nothing. Some rare work for the ball girls behind the Peters goal. So the ball's bouncing around, a couple battles going on. Seton's end, Seton ends up collecting it, and Peters kicks it out of bounds, so it'll be a Seton throw. So just under three left now in the game. Seton's trying to muster up a goal to keep, uh, keep from getting shut out, and I think Peters certainly wants to preserve the shutout, but I'd really like to see this group um, uh, get a goal here too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so it's played up the midfield. Good ball by Burroughs. Not sure she yep. had played the ball, had the opportunity to play the ball with her hands yet. Trapanato gets the corner yep. there. Yep, she's in. She's got a couple Indians breaking. Does, you know, good thought on the cross. The it happens to hit a Seton player, and here we go. Who, who takes this corner here? I think Riley Lopez is going to take this one. Yeah, this will be Riley. Uh, she's naturally a right foot, though, correct? She is, so this will swing out. Yep. It's Lopez with the service. It's right she in the box. Drives it in. Off of Trapanato. Lopez gets another yeah. shot at it. Uh, it goes wide of the net. It'll be a seat and goal kick. Yep, not sure she knew exactly what to do there, so she sort of opened her hips and I think was trying to get that on goal. Any, uh, I'm a big fan of any time you have an open shot and you're close to the net, though, you should be taking it. Yeah, and there, were, right. there was a, a big crowd there, too, so uh, you right. know, not, a, not a bad decision yep. there by Riley. Good work by Maddie Bush. So Seton collects it. That was Monifa Beery, number nine there for Seton LaSalle, who's, who's played a strong game. She has. She, she's presence. been very she, strong. Yep, she has really battled. Yep. That's a nice ball. That is a nice there. ball, That's and it goes go. in. It looks like, was that Maddie I Bush who got Maddie it? Bush I think it was Maddie Bush. I think so, too. That. Good job for Maddie. Well, well done. That was a well Played set there. Yeah, it was uh, sure it was Maddie Bush. I'm, I'm not sure, sure. Who, who fed that in. It, it might have been Nicolette Gill. So nice job, Nicolette and Maddie. No, oh, great ball, great With ball. Played Twelve in seconds left. Finish. All right, so we're going to be wrapping up this game. The 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 Lady Indians with a good showing tonight. Win this one eight to nothing. So Al, I guess all you can say is you know good game. Yeah, you know, job done, uh, mission accomplished, uh, and uh, no injuries. So, you know, on to the next game, which is Monday at, uh, against Cannon so McMillan.
So thanks for yep. tuning in, and uh, see you out there. Have a good night.